So you finished your bullet journal. Now what? Moving into a new bullet journal can be exciting, but also a little bit daunting. So let's look at what bullet journal migration is and the step-by-step -step process for doing it. Migration in general terms is moving open entries in our journal by one, reviewing those open entries to make sure that they're actually worthy of our time and attention, and two, transferring those worthwhile open entries to other places. In the case of new journal migration, we'll be transferring those into our new journals. Much like other types of migration, we'll be deciding what entries are worth moving, and like monthly migration in particular, we'll also be considering which collections are worth moving. In bullet journaling, the period of time captured within each journal is called a chapter. This gives us a nice way to describe that length of time more generally generally, because not everybody is going to use their bullet journal for the same amount of time. For instance, previously I was on a pretty regular schedule of having a new journal every six months, but since the start of 2022, I've actually been using my journals for anywhere between three to five months. Ryder suggests that we start a new journal with each new year, and I can totally understand why that is, because the new year is effectively a fresh start, so why not really fully embrace that by starting a new journal as well? That's not to say that you have to start every new journal with the new year though, and we have a separate video about when you might want to start a new journal. Prior to doing new journal migration though, it is encouraged that you have done an end of journal reflection. This is where we consider what has or hasn't been working in the time that that notebook covers, and what we want more or less of moving forward. This type of reflection can act as a lens that helps us with the migration process, and the first step in that process is to review our index. While for the other types of migration, we would normally start with our open entries, in new journal migration, we start with the index because this gives us a nice wide view of what we've been spending our time on in this past season or past chapter. By having a look through our index, we can see the things that have been taking up our time and attention, or the things that we've been focusing on in the past few months. While we look through these index entries, we want to consider what we're going to be taking forward with us. And we can do this by asking ourselves some questions, like which collections add value, which collections continue to add value, which collections have helped move me forward with my goals, or which collections have helped me overcome challenges. It's also important to consider which collections have worked in the way you intended them to or which ones haven't done that. New journal migration is an awesome opportunity to change the structure of your layouts so that they will serve you better moving forward. As we go through our index though, it can be helpful to signify which collections will be coming with us into our new journal. To do this, you can put a bullet beside each entry in your index and for any collections that you decide you don't want to transfer, you can cross that bullet out in the same way that you would a typical task. As you go through and ask yourself the reflection questions that we talked about before, you'll cross off those collections that are no longer needed or no longer serving a purpose, and the open bullets you're left with are the collections that are still relevant. They still add value, and they still serve a purpose. This gives you a nice easy visual to indicate which of your collections you'll take the time to transfer. If you don't have an index, then there is no need to worry. I also don't use an index in my everyday journal. So what I would do instead is just flip through the pages of my notebook and pay attention to the headings on each of my different collections. This is effectively the information that the index would capture anyway, so I can still do this type of review just by going through the pages of my notebook. Once you've done your index review, it's then time for the more typical open entry review. This is where we pass each of our open entries through that migration filter. So considering, is this vital? Does this matter? And are there any consequences for not doing it? If the answer to all of those is no, we can scrap the entry. It is a distraction. But if the answer to any of them is a yes, then those things are going to be the ones we transfer. Just like monthly migration, you may be wondering, why are we asking all of these questions about our tasks over and over again? This is just an opportunity to make sure that those tasks still align with what our current situation is. Do they still serve us? Are they still relevant given our current season of life? Even if they've made it through the migration filter previously, they won't necessarily make it through now. Our next step though is to set up our new journals using the information that we gained from going through our index and open entries. While this one is a little bit outside of the migration process itself, it is necessary to do before our next step, which is to transfer things into our new journal. It's a little bit hard to transfer things into a new journal if the journal isn't set up, so doing this step before transferring is a good idea. Now there's a lot of information that gets captured in our bullet journals, so going through all of the different ways that we could be transferring here can be a little bit tricky. 
but some of the main ones would be transferring any date specific entries from your current future log into your new future log, moving entries related to the upcoming month into the first monthly log of our new journal, and transferring our other open entries into our other collections. Just like we would with other types of migration, we can denote that entries have been migrated by turning their bullet or dot into a greater than sign. And we can also do this on the index if we put those little bullets in before. Like we talked about, new journal migration involves reviewing our current journals and then transferring into the new one. But before we move into our new journal, we need to do the fun part of setting it up. I want your next journal setup to be specifically tailored to your needs. And thankfully we have a video on just that topic. In that one, we talk about how to uncover your journal's purpose and select layouts that'll actually align with that. So click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.